Alright everybody, we're going to do the ladies of illustration today and we're going to have questions. Obviously, use your outside voice and we'll hear you just fine. I will take all your questions or as much as we can. And I'm Charles McFall, I'll be hosting it for you. And why well, y'all swept up chairs again? <laughs> my you we're trying to so check it. Yeah. Alright, well now we have Ursula guessing. Decay. Hello. Robin Eisenberg. <laughs> and Wendy Ortiz. Yay. I hope I said that right. I'm bad at it. Okay, good. So, perfect. Ortiz. Is that your name? Ortiz. Oh, I hear it all the time. I bet you do. It was do. perfect. I bet you see, now that you moved down there, you're going to be first to answer everything. Oh, darn. Oh, can I switch again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I just so I will kick off the questions for you here. Uh, this is my daughter here in the front row. She's a budding artist. She likes to start drawing, right? And she's looking for good influences. But what she started doing was taking a, a still frame or something and tracing it and then re trying to recreate it. Yeah. So what I'm asking you, I'll start here with her. How did you start um. your drawing? Well, usually a lot of people go through like an anime phase or like a furry phase, but um, <laughs> mine started with my mom collected a lot of fashion magazines, so I would see the ads and I would okay. try to like copy the outfits or change what I didn't like. So when I was little, I was copying whatever is in Vogue yeah. or <laughs> Cosmo. That's also, but you might adjust like it. Yeah, just yeah. it. Oh, this would be more cool if it had more bright colors or something. You could have like been that. a fashion designer too. Could have yeah. been. I could have been. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, for me, I started. I read a lot of fantasy novels uh, when I was a kid, and I loved like the the covers of them were really cool. There was a lot of dragons and a lot of like really cool women that were very tough and like could do magic and stuff, and lots of elves that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> so when I was a kid, I would draw a lot of that kind of thing, and uh, I always wanted. I thought that would be a really cool career to like make these covers of my favorite books. And um, my mom was also an artist in college, and so she was always been really encouraging of me to like be an artist. Um, and same with my sister. We come, I come from like a really artistic family, and so everything was always like everybody was excited about art in general. So, so you never got discouraged to pursue art. No, like I mean, with my my parents were both. My dad, I think, as I got older, was kind of like the voice of reason as far as like, what about the money and this, and he was <laughs> a little bit more like business oriented. But my mom, she was really amazing. I mean, she would just encourage me to do any kind of artistic pursuit. She would be like all about it, even if it meant that I wasn't going to be earning much for a while, you know, <laughs> at first, yeah. Wendy. Cool. Um, yeah, I think some of my earlier stuff, um, I want to keep it, like, really PG, I see a lot of kids. <laughs> um, so I'll just call them, like, a adult magazines or graphic Publication. novels. Publications. Yeah. Publications uh, that I used to, like, find, you know, under my dad's bed, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think that's, like, where it kind of started, where I just started to like really feel like, oh, I saw some beautiful image and I really want to draw that. But to speak to what you were saying about your daughter and her process, I actually do the same thing now. I didn't, it took me a while to get there, but yeah, I learned that that's kind of like a really great way to like learn how to just like draw lines and stuff, at least for me, I will trace and you know, then try to render after the fact of like okay. the clean totally. line work. So. Nice. Yeah. yeah. All right. Questions? No, you got some. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Tips for beginners. Oh, yeah. Um, I would say I know you guys watch a lot of these YouTube videos and you guys see a lot of artists online and they all have like the thousand dollar <laughs> Cintiq or they have, we're all drawing on iPad Pros and all this stuff, but you really don't need that kind of stuff. I am, I could draw just as good with a box of Crayola markers as I could with a box of Copics. So it's really your talent and not the, um, the materials the, the, yeah, that comes like later. Technology or whatever. So learn yeah. with the cheap stuff, and you'll be able to build your skills up. And totally. by the time you start totally. drawing with those expensive things, <laughs> you'll be kicking everybody else's butt who's been drawing. With yeah. That. yeah. <laughs> and just and, and don't be afraid to like experiment with different styles. You know, like even if it's something that you have never done before, and you're not sure what it's whether it's going to be good or not. It even doing something that you end up not liking can lead to. A, drawing something that you are excited about and that it's yeah. really fun and that maybe isn't what you were originally expecting yourself to be able to draw, you know. For sure. I completely agree. I think uh, for myself, I um, initially I wanted to become a tattoo artist. So I learned how to draw by just like, they, they, they will tell you this and, um, inter, you know, tattoo internships or whatever, um, trace, just trace 
everything that you can and once you get that part down the line work comes easy but that is only for like heavy line work like myself which I really really enjoy comic book um, kind of style yeah yeah, 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 yeah exactly. for sure and it's like so, training your hand in a way yeah, yeah I think uh but any artwork that you do like the biggest tip for, from me is just tracing that yeah. really really got me started so, totally yeah. So how did you develop, well, in art form, your own voice? How did you develop yourself? Because you all three have amazingly different styles, yet they complement each other mm -hmm. really well. I mean, I know you don't work together, but that's why you do these panels, I imagine. Yeah. Because you know, your styles really complement. How did you develop your style? <clears throat> oh, <man. laughs> I just cleared my throat. My style, I was really, in high school, dressed like a cyberpunk yeah. i was really into like underground kind of looks i like tattoos i like piercings things like that so i would draw characters that had all the things that i couldn't have my mom's totally. like no you're not shaving your head into a mohawk yeah. okay well i guess my oc will have a mohawk then. Yeah. eventually got it but <laughs> things like that um my older cousins had a lot of memorabilia from the 80s and a lot of 80s cartoons and I would look at those and I'd be like, oh, well, I'm a child of the 90s, so everything was very grungy, mm. the colors were really dull, but I would see things like the Care Bears or Gem and the Holograms mm, and everything yeah. was so bright and pretty and that influenced me. So it's like, um, I like goth stuff and I like bright colorful stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's my totally. art. That, you yeah. know what I think about that? That's exactly <laughs> the way you describe your art. Either. That's awesome. And Colorful I, goth. Yeah. <laughs> Colorful goth. <laughs> I like the contrast of it. I mean, and that's sort of the same with me. Like, it was a lot... I mean, growing up, I drew really differently as a kid. Like, I would draw... I didn't really know how to, like, put color into my artwork because I just could never get the right colors because I would try and it would just end up looking not how I imagined it. And so I ended up drawing a lot of, like, black and white stuff. But all the art, a lot of the art I loved was always super vivid and bright and like the, the shows like Gem and the Holograms yeah. and like all that kind of thing. I really loved it. And same with those book covers were really great. Um, so then eventually it was only like when I was able to start making my work digital that I was able to add color that I'd never been able to do before. And it was really exciting for me. And then suddenly it was like it took me a whole different place where I was like, wow, I can finally like take what's in my brain and put it on like something into my art. And that was a big, big thing for me for sure. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really nervous. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> How did you develop your particular style? Yeah. Um, okay, okay. Sorry, uh, I kind of derailed it. That's what I was No, no, no. I just like, I, okay. Um, my particular style, I, I'm not really sure. I went through, I think I tried like at least 10 through 20 different styles before I found something that felt really actually comfortable and natural to me. Mm -hmm. But I, like I said, I started with tracing, so I tried everything that seemed aesthetically pleasing to the eye, but not necessarily to my hand. <laughs> yeah. at, at some point, something, you know, just kind of like fit and felt natural. Just clicked, it felt it, it right. It did, it did. And I think it was when I discovered, um, all, you know, Alphonse Mucha and Klimt, yeah. and I, I started tracing them, and then eventually Adam Hughes, who's here, which by the way, if you guys haven't been there, please go to his table. <laughs> Did you go to his table? I'm sitting next to him. I oh, haven't right. gone yet. I'm too I can't even believe it. I've, like, I've been following him since before I knew how to draw. So nice. I just, yeah. Have you talked to him? Yet today? I, no, I, I, the first thing I did, like I beelined it for him. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's how you do it, right? But, um, go talk to the people who influenced you. Yeah, yeah. no. That's really and cool. He's actually super sweet. It, he's amazing if you guys don't know Adam Hughes like I feel like I'm like his PR person I know. <laughs> <laughs> so much last time. that's awesome yes. so. questions yes. <laughs> yes sir do you guys have um, a book of your artwork downstairs or at the in the, in the uh, yeah we we uh, all have um tables in in it's called the artist alley so it's like literally in the center of the convention okay. mm -hmm. and yeah do so. you have a book of your work I you don't have, have a book but I have like I have art prints and you know other types of. I have some originals left. Yeah. And stuff like that. I have I have like a couple books. I have a coloring book and then I have like, it's sort of like a fancy zine. It's like a just a collection of prints that are all related to like women at night with the moon by themselves kind of thing. You know? <laughs> or like eating pizza in the bathtub stuff like that. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> My life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> same, same. Um, I think I have, I just have a bunch of stickers. I didn't bring any prints with me this time around, so I just packed light. So you come to my table. 
stickers. Yay. <laughs> stickers are a good thing, stickers right? Awesome. Yeah. They're easy to hand out. <laughs> exactly. Now, are you selling prints and stuff at your table? Well, there you go. That's, that's how you, yes. you yep. self-support them. Yeah. And I have like enamel pins also, which is kind of fun. Yes. The guy when you say is really cool. <laughs> All right. Questions? Yes, sir. Uh, Sorry. So how, no. uh, it's okay. So how are you able to find, I guess, jobs in your field? Okay. For me, I've gotten most of my jobs, like not even just sending things out to people, but through social media. That has really got, I haven't had to send my portfolio out anywhere because of social media. So um, posting your art, tagging it, um, getting into groups on different websites, whether it's DeviantArt. I've gotten a lot, of, people rag on DeviantArt, but I've gotten a lot of professional jobs from there. I've gotten a lot of professional jobs from Instagram and Twitter as well. Totally. So have your email always in your yeah. information. Always have examples of your artwork linked. I would suggest like a professional email, yes, right? So yes, more yes, less yes, than yes. a personal one. Yeah. That, that will separate it out. That way people can't, if something goes south, you can block them pretty <laughs> easily. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, for me, I mean, I used to try, I used to get jobs in a different way. I mean, before, in, before I really started an Instagram for my art, I was touring with a band and I would meet other bands and kind of like, I would always be drawing on tour, so I would just kind of share, we'd be hanging out and they would end up being like, oh, you should do like an album cover or this or that. And back then, I mean, I had a website for sure, but I didn't, social, like Instagram was not yet a big thing. So I would like look, I would look online a lot back then. I'd go on Craigslist. I had a couple of really awful jobs that were super low paying and like I would not take no. But, um, but yeah, I had to start somewhere. And then, um, yeah, Instagram was a huge thing. I mean, now 90% of my jobs come from Instagram or Tumblr or yep. some social media site. And it's like you said, like, I don't remember the last time I sent a portfolio link or like they even come to my you website, now, you know, like great. it's just not a thing. And, and on Instagram, yeah, it's just connecting with people um, tagging people in your work and sharing, trying to get it out to like as many eyes as possible. And also having an online shop was good for me because it kind of was like sending out mini business cards all over the yeah. world, like with the pins and stuff. That was really yeah. helpful for sure. Yeah, my answer totally mirrors what they said. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, I did the DeviantArt thing, I did the Tumblr yeah. thing, but um, I think Instagram and Facebook platforms really would like put it out there totally. and um, people started, you know, contacting me, emailing me and asking for commission work and it's uh that's definitely the way that and, uh, yeah. I feel like that's how I got the first jobs you know and eventually as you share the progress of the first commissions because I find that it's really important to share like the journey of your work in progresses mm -hmm. that's what people want to know it's like it helps people that are learning or want to learn how to make art but it also helps the collectors to understand all the time that it takes to make that art. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. So that's how I got the first jobs, and then it's just kind of been like organic growth through that. Yeah. So, and it, and I mean, yeah. I know that like when I first started doing Instagram or any social media, like I would just just do like personal drawings yeah. of like my favorite people or bands or whatever, and then tag them in it, and then a lot of times that would end up leading to like an actual paid job. Mm -hmm that would be super exciting for me because I'm like, wow, I get to work with like this, my favorite band, but <laughs> just from Instagram, it's so weird, but it's just the reality of it. And I've had a lot of like jobs contact me and like they just have scouts that like look on Instagram for artists and for people that like to make art for their campaigns or whatever, which it's is- It's a whole new world. It now. is, yeah, yeah, it's really strange, yeah. yeah. But it's awesome, I mean, what you can- What kind of posts are the most effective and you do something like that? Well, like what kind of posts? For yeah. me, it's just, just art, like it's just the, the drawing. Yeah, I found that like, but every and everybody's different, you know, because I think it's like you have to sort of find out what your audience um, yes. is looking for, you know, because sometimes what your niche is exactly because yeah. what works for me would have the opposite effect with someone else where they want a certain thing, you know. And I've had friends who maybe started careers on Instagram or they started their career doing something like makeup and then they decided to switch and they found it to be a struggle to like move from one to the other because their audience was like, oh, we don't care about your art. We just yeah, want to yeah. see this. And she's like, no, like, I want to share art. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's, and that's the thing, I think is just finding what gets the most, like, I hate to use the term, but engagement, you know, and what makes people get excited and like want to like see more and that kind of thing. Yeah. That's absolutely true. Yeah. yeah. Now, Robin, I know you have your own website. Yeah. I don't, I, I do you have your own website? No. So I did, yeah, I did things. So. I knew I found you on Instagram. <laughs> Wendy? I, I do, but it hasn't been updated in like years. Okay. So, so and this is an so interesting sad. take. Like you live yeah. totally on social media yeah. then. Yeah. Um, I've 
realize I'm like, why am I paying for this? And yeah, like, people are coming to see my Instagram page. That's for free. Why am I gonna pay? Well, everything I put on there is gonna be what's totally. on here. So. And then, but Robin, you maintain your page. How's that working for you? I do. Yeah. I, I mean, I like it. Before, when I first made it, it was mainly because at the time I didn't have a big Instagram following, and I needed. I also needed. I wanted to have an online shop, and I didn't really want to go. At the time, I could have gone the Etsy route, but I liked the idea of sharing like a portfolio and my online shop at the time. And because I didn't yet have an audience, I was like, well, I need somewhere to point people. So I started with my website, and um, and I, I, I like maintaining it a, part for a couple of reasons. I, I don't really want someone else to grab like RobinEisenberg.com and turn it into something super weird. Oh, <laughs> didn't think about that. I yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, wait. Um, but you don't have to build a website. You just own the domain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just leave yeah. it there. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, and I mean, also, I think I so with the shop stuff. Sometimes it's helpful because uh, even though I've closed it right now temporarily, but um, just from being busy. But I think. I like having it as an additional thing that's just there, but you're right. I mean, it is. It is. It can be kind of not necessary in a lot of ways, you know, because the truth is. It like, used to be very like. It was. Oh, you don't yeah. have a website. Taking that and job. And that's when right, I kind of. That's right. when I started it was because yeah. of that. And now that I have it, I guess I just keep it and I like. Just in case. Just having it there. Yeah. yeah, it's like an extra thing that maybe someone will, you know, find me through that way as well, and it's kind of helpful. Yeah. That makes sense. And. The other thing, I do a lot of media with audio and video, and the thing we always preach is have something you control. So ultimately, you don't control Facebook or YouTube yeah, or that's true, yeah. Instagram. Um, obviously, you can start over tomorrow if you had to. I mean, you've got a following. If Instagram shut off all artists, you, know, you would not <laughs> lose a whole lot because you have other outlets. But it's always fun to have something you control. But like yeah. in your case, if it's just not working and you're feeling like, eh, it's not working, <laughs> Live where you live, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, when did you you said you have WhatsApp, you had updated it, so you found that the social media worked much better for you? Uh, yeah, it did, and I I've actually been trying to just recently because um, my manager here, I, she's just <laughs> like you know part of the team now. Um, she's gonna help me update it. I I do think I believe in like having a little bit more control because. Mm -hmm. Instagram and all the updates that they've been doing and I the know. algorithm just being or like totally being like or weird. Um, yeah. well, Facebook bought it. Facebook. That changed things. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Same with Facebook. Um, it used to be easier to like grow my platform and get a lot more of my work out there, and now it's not. So I think I am now trying to focus on getting a little bit of that control back. Yeah. Being that website, um, I have a Shopify website and. At least, I mean, for the last two years, it's worked as like an ancient portfolio of my work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm archive. trying to update that. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an archive. Yeah. Um, I want to start including some more originals and you know oh, stuff, nice. so people can reach me through that, and not just Instagram or my Society Six page or my Redbubble, which are like print-on-demand medias. Yeah, gotcha. um, those are really so, good. Yeah, too, yeah. yeah. But, it, but it is weird thinking about like what would happen if suddenly there was no internet or something, you know what I mean? Because yeah. we get so used to having a platform to know, share we, with so we many people. And it's, it's, it would, it's yeah. now we're so dependent on it that yeah. it's weird even thinking, yeah. even though yeah. I've experienced it, like yeah. I, was, I did some of that, but it's, it is really strange for sure. Yeah. Questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, what do you guys suggest for people who have the, I guess they suffer from same face syndrome? Because mm. I'm someone who's like a beginner artist, mm -hmm. and that's something that I struggle with a lot. Well, um, I wouldn't be too hard on yourself about it. I know your art teachers are going to tell you, like, <laughs> diversify, and, and you should, but there's a lot of artists out there, I'm not going to say any names, yeah. that I love, that <laughs> yeah, I love, yeah, yeah. that everyone is basically the same face in different colors, <laughs> yeah, and I love totally. them because I love their style, and I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> they can keep drawing that face, I love yeah, that face. Yeah. Um, but if you want to be able to change and you want to be able to do different faces, I'd say draw your friends, um, draw your family, draw people that you like on the internet, a famous Instagram model that you think is pretty or yeah, something like totally. that. Because drawing those people, even just in your sketchbook, not posting it anywhere, you're building up like a mental library of all these different facial features. Yeah. So somebody... Um, who was it? Somebody looked at one of my artworks and was like, oh, this person kind of reminds me of Dita Von Teese or something. It's because I look at her pictures and I've drawn her yeah. so much I have her face kind of memorized yeah. in my head. And sometimes little bits and pieces of them pop up in the faces. So practice by drawing 
family collect those facial features. Yeah, in your totally. Library. Just like building a little <laughs> collection yeah, yeah. of things. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's also you can. I know for me, sometimes I find myself. I'm like, do these people all look the same that I'm drawing? Like, and I kind of question it. So I try to just practice drawing, changing one thing, you know, dramatically, like one feature, like that. I in a way that I would not normally go just for fun. Even if I don't, if I'm, if it makes me kind of uncomfortable or if I don't like how it looks it's good to like force myself out of my normal feature comfort zone and just be like, okay, let's try something totally different and just see what it's like. And then eventually it starts to affect your drawing, you know, and you, you start expanding your skill set. I think a little bit, at least for me. Yeah, no, it's, it's exactly what they said. I, I don't feel like I can add to that. It's just, you kind of just push yourself to, you know, just try it. You're probably not going to like it the first few times, <laughs> yeah. but it doesn't mean it's a failure. It's just the process. So totally. yeah. <laughs> You raise your hand, right? Yeah. <laughs> now it's your turn. How long have you guys been drawing? Ooh. Mm. I've been drawing forever. I've been drawing <laughs> since I was like three. Everybody in my family draws. My dad is an artist, my sisters, my brothers, everyone, cousins, we all draw. My mom is the only one who can't, <laughs> can't draw. She's <laughs> left out of it. But um, it was always encouraged to color or. Um, I was like a homebody kid. I like to stay inside a lot. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to play video games or you're going to draw. So I've been doing that forever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, same as me. I've been drawing since I, it's like one of the earliest things I can remember doing. And I have really hilarious drawings of like unicorns when I was three years old that are pretty good, I think. You know? <laughs> yeah. Maybe Jelly not. Yeah. With a stick coming My mom out. <laughs> likes them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I used to draw pictures for like Santa Claus and leave cookies next to them and stuff. Um, it's pretty cute. Um, but, um, but yeah, I've been drawing for a really long time. Um, definitely things, I mean, obviously the styles changed a lot and everything, yeah, but, sure. and, and even the mediums, like I used to draw like only with pen and oh, then went through a pencil phase and then this, but, but I have been drawing for a long time for sure. Yeah. Uh, I think I've, uh, I've been drawing, um, I guess, quote unquote, trying to like make it professionally mm -hmm. for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, before that, I took a, a really long break from uh, drawing because my mom was really disapproving of it like throughout you know I guess the middle school high school and some college before I dropped out and decided I wanted to become an artist but um yeah I, I remember like one of my first passions was just drawing I used to draw as a little kid for a really long time and then I just dropped it for a while picked it back up when I was in my early 20s and yeah and here I am now <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been 10 years Questions? Um, other than, of course, being an artist and doing what you love, what other jobs have you thought about having other than drawing mm. and being an artist? Mm. That's That's a good question. Question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> almost every single job that I thought about having had a little something to do with art. Um, for a long time, I was a tattoo apprentice and I was going to do tattoos. Mm -hmm. Then I was a piercing apprentice, so I was going to do <laughs> piercing. So every job I've had before that has been in a tattoo shop. But I wanted to be a fashion designer when I was little. But um, I kind of do that now with yeah, drawing characters. Yeah, yeah, concept art, you get to do that kind of stuff. So, That's awesome. Yeah. I've had a lot of weird job attempts. Um, I, I mean, I've always drawn throughout everything. But when I was younger, like I always loved like writing, drawing, and playing music. And so I went to college actually as a jazz musician because I played a lot of jazz music in high school and I got a scholarship to go to college for it so I did that and then then I got really disillusioned with it and I started listening to like punk rock and I was like <laughs> my jazz teachers were like you shouldn't listen to that <laughs> so, so I kind of failed as a jazz musician um, and then I switched to English and I thought I'm gonna be like a writer but I'm not that good and so um and throughout all of my like studies, I would just be drawing constantly instead of taking notes. So I should have been like, that's kind of a clue. Like maybe that's what I should do. Yeah. But, um, and then I played in a band for a long time, like six years. And so I kind of thought maybe that would be what I do. Um, and I liked it, but something always felt like I wasn't doing exactly what I wanted to. Um, so I finally started trying to be an artist, but it took a long time to become like at the level where it was like sustaining and I could like just do it full time. Mm -hmm. I briefly yeah. like, almost gave up and thought maybe I can be a marine biologist, but that was very <laughs> much just a quick side job. Yeah, yeah. And then fortunately, like, I decided to keep trying and then, yeah, and then I became, I was able to, like, finally start doing it full-time professionally in, like, 2015 or 16 or so. Yeah. 
Yeah, same. I, I've done <laughs> biologist? Yeah. No, for sure. I, I've done yeah. every single job. Um, I'm not sure if that's answering the question, which is what would I... Oh, what would we? Oh, yeah. yeah, what would I be doing if I wasn't doing this? I have zero clue because... Motivational you know, speaker. Yeah, no, <laughs> in real life, like, I was trying to figure it out, and I've had, like, 20-plus different jobs, all which I've quit because I was like, this doesn't fit, this doesn't yeah. fit, and, um, yeah, I've done, like, you know, bartending, vet tech, receptionist, like every single job you can think of, and um, this is the one that's stuck. I've never actually like stopped to really think about it, so I, I sorry, I don't really have an answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's. It's hard to picture like what you yeah. want to do when, especially when all of us are so lucky that we're able to do the thing that we really yeah. want to do, and. It's, so it's it's just weird to picture. I, it, it's like any other job feels like I would be frustrated. Like I feel like, why why, why yeah. am I not drawing all the time? Yeah. What it actually sounds like is the whole time, every, each one of your stories had that same element mm -hmm. of, I was always doing me, which is in your case drawing. Yeah. And I think that's where people get off base of, you because know, you all said oh, our parents were supportive. I was wanted to be a musician. And my parents said, starving artist, you can't do that. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> So you get locked into ideas of what other people have for your reality, but what you all did was you had this job, but you were drawing. You had this job, but you were drawing. Right. And now the world opened up to where, yeah. Yeah. I don't care if I get paid, I'm putting it up on Instagram, I'm putting it up here, and now you're getting paid because you stayed true to who you were, and that's what it sounds like you totally. really did. Yeah, yeah. definitely, so. yeah, that's very true. What sort of percentage of your work is done uh, like directly onto a screen rather than with oh, like traditional? Yeah. 100% digital. <laughs> I, if you really think about it, not to rag on traditional at all, because I was an oil painter, I did watercolor, but why am I paying for all this paint? I have to go to the <laughs> store. Oh man, I don't have that really pretty turquoise blue that I want. Yeah. I have to go to the store and buy that turquoise blue. In the computer, I have every single color I could ever want, ever, and I don't have to pay for it. Yeah. I want that. <laughs> That's a silly answer, but yeah. yeah totally. <laughs> so 100% no, digital right now, but I, I can do traditional if I had to. Yeah, totally. Um, for me, it's, it's, it's probably like, 80, 90 digital. I mean, I, I always, I never was digital. And then I remember, like, I, this is kind of weird, but I grew up next to, um, you know, the show Hey Arnold mm. and Craig Bartlett. Like, he was my neighbor, and um, I babysat his kids and stuff, which is so <laughs> funny. Um, and I remember he said, he was like, you should get a Wacom tablet. Like, you should start trying to draw digital. It's a lot, like, you can, it's a lot faster and you have more options. And so I'd never thought of it. And, um, when I started doing it, it was really fun. And uh, since then, I, st I do mostly digital, just especially for clients. It's so much easier with revisions. And so much of my client work, I've never had a client need a physical piece, really. You know, it's always like either going to be printed or going to be for an online campaign. So for that stuff, I definitely use digital. Um, the only time I, I like still doing like traditional pieces because I don't want to forget how to do it. And I did it for yeah. such a long time. And it feels because it's harder, it does feel really satisfying. Like I did a few like murals recently that were it was so much fun and it felt amazing to see this massive like traditional <laughs> piece that I I was like, wow, I can still I can do that. That's awesome. Um, kind of like you're saying, like you still can do it and yeah. it feels good to know you can do it. Um, <laughs> but definitely like more digital probably than traditional. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm on the opposite spectrum of <laughs> Priscilla here. I I'm 100% traditional. Um, I just recently realized that I, I should maybe start trying to learn some digital stuff um, because I, I am envious of like the you know like the time frame like you mess up and you just you know click yeah. a button yeah. and reset <laughs> it and don't have to start over as opposed to me like I have to sand things down and then rework everything and yeah. my pieces take months and but it, there is a satisfying factor to the end of it like I like having the physical tactile totally yeah, like, yeah. and I've I've worked with like an iPad Pro and like the you know digital pencil and and it's really really fun and it's really nice but at the end of it I'm like for some reason like I miss the paintbrush feel I miss like the wet paint I miss the grain and I, I don't know maybe I'm just like so ingrained in what I've done for like the past 10 years that I'm kind of like, I'm, just, I'm, no, yeah. I'm, I'm totally stubborn too, I'm just, so um, yeah, yeah, to answer your question, I'm 100% traditional, but I'm trying to actually like learn what the ladies are doing, and they've inspired me because mm -hmm. I, you know, I just met you guys a few months ago, and yeah, totally. yeah 
and I, I see the benefit to the opposite side, and it'd be awesome to like find a middle ground to merge the two yeah. for myself. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. You had a question. So thinking about the success that you're enjoying now, can you describe your ideal retirement? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so silly, but. I don't know. I don't want to stop drawing until my hands just freaking <laughs> disintegrate. I don't want to stop drawing ever. My ideal retirement is like uh, maybe own my own house instead of like renting <laughs> or whatever, or I don't know, big yard for my rabbit, <laughs> 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 my Pomeranian. Um, that's my ideal. I I like. I mean, same with draw. Like I think it would be rad if when I'm much older and like I would be able to focus 100% on my own personal projects and like not have like, cause I love a lot of the client work that I do, but some of it I'm like, I have no interest in this product or like this thing and I, but it's like a really good job and so I have to do it to pay my bills and, um, and it would be rad to like ha have all the time in the world to like do draw like massive graphic novels or like something, an animated TV show or something or just learn a new skill and start implementing it um, and like, and I love the idea of like just having a big space where I can work, and maybe I have like a mint garden or something, um, <laughs> and like a really cute dog, and that'd be nice. Yeah, that sounds nice. Yeah, that's uh, same thing. Like uh, I want to um, be able to afford all the things that I, you know, I want, and but also just take on all the projects without any worry about like where the next paycheck is coming yeah. in. Yeah. So yeah. It's, Simple. I think that's ideal. I want to be able to afford the things for my husband and my kids without any worry of like, you know. The pressures of the, anything. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But it is an interesting question because it's like so many people, their job is not the thing that they're passionate about. You know what I mean? Like that's the thing that they are waiting to be done with so they can do what they're passionate about, you know. And for us, yeah. it's like we are already doing the thing that makes us so happy, which is amazing and like super lucky. But yeah, yeah. it does, it changes that answer, you know, to the question. It's kind of yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. We'll get you and I'll come to you next. Uh, I'd love to hear about you guys' um, process when you kind of get an idea burning in the back of your head. Um, my experience has always been I get it burning and then I have to do it and I'm stuck on it. I <laughs> like, can't do anything else hardly. And then I get burned out real quick and I don't even want to do anything until you know the next thing comes burning in my brain. But when you're doing that full time, that's not an option to totally. kind of just do what you want all the time. So. I'd love to hear about kind of your tips for once you're burned out <laughs> no. or kind of once you get stuck on something to kind of do something else that's not just that one I'm thing. I'm kind of exactly like you where it's like, <laughs> oh my god, that would be so cool. I want to draw this right now. And I can't because I have to finish these commissions. So I'll go and I'll do those commissions and I'll, I'll be sitting there at that computer at like 3 o'clock in the morning like, I have to draw this. Yeah. <laughs> Girl, riding a motorcycle is in my head right now and I have yeah. to draw it. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I basically have it like finish my responsibilities so I can do this fun thing. Totally, yeah. I hardly <clears throat> get art block because I... Um, Every time I get an idea, I have like a list on my phone of like <laughs> everything I want to draw. So oh keeping God. a list like that really helps too. Yeah. I have the exact same thing. Yeah. <laughs> like I have like the list on my phone, which would make like, like no sense to anyone else. It's like weird lists of like fire with like a volcano near, blah, blah, blah like random hair things. girl's yeah. sprinkle shirt. Yeah. What does that mean? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Girl with like bat wings or something, I don't know. Uh, but, um, but yeah, and so I just make, if, when I get those ideas, I write them on that list and they just are sitting, like you said, like in the back of your head. And then, yeah, like same with you, like I, I usually just sacrifice other important life things like sleep or like, <laughs> you know, like 3 3 or drawing. yeah, like <laughs> other things. And I just stay up like the last two nights I stayed up till four just working and I just did that because I had a project I wanted to finish that I didn't get a chance to and I just wanted to finish it. Um, so yeah, that, that was probably it. But I mean, I think when you do get burned out, like it is hard to like, because it's like you said, like sometimes you have that creative idea and then if you don't do it right away, when you finally have the time, it can be hard to like back get up. back in the feeling of it, you know? And so I think, but it helps some, in a weird way, it helps to not have a lot of free time because then when you finally do it's like okay I can finally do it and it's still there <laughs> yeah
Yeah, no, it, I, it, I'm sure it happens to all creatives. I don't know how many people are here that like make art and draw, but yes, you pick up an idea, you start it, and eventually you kind of lose that momentum or that mm -hmm. feeling. And you know, it happens to me a lot, and which is why I have like kind of like 10 to 20 pieces going at once because if I lose like that emotion behind that first idea, I kind of just move on and pick up where like that next emotion starts start that and then I rotate and it takes forever to get back and I eventually pick back up and sometimes when I have to force myself to you know like just get back in the grind or if I'm like in a rut um, honestly like wine or whiskey normally helps to just like <laughs> propel forward I, I, I have to be honest like the that combination is like yeah, yeah. <laughs> two or three whatever yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, I, I, it's not always the case, but often it is. I just like have to like have my own time and just you know sit and focus. It'll come back. Like it always does, and sometimes it takes two to three years for me. Like I have so many abandoned pieces in my garage that are like five years old, and then I'll like come back and I'm like, now I know how to finish you. Wow. You know, I, I have no problem putting something down without like trying to like force it yeah. at the moment. So, but that's my process. I, you know, it doesn't work for everybody. So I'd like to sell my art one day, but I'm not really comfortable with the quality yet. Mm -hmm. So how would one go about becoming someone's apprentice to like prove, prove that it failed? Mm -hmm. Oh. New business idea for you. Right there. Mm -hmm. Email yeah. me. Are you in LA area? Yeah. I'll be an apprentice. Uh, <laughs> um, I haven't really heard of like artists taking on apprentice besides in tattoos. I haven't heard of, of that in art, but I think the way um, with social media now, probably your best bet is like watching YouTube videos or taking those YouTube lessons or um, what's that website oh, that does? Oh, Udemy or something? Yeah, or, yeah, 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 yeah. Where you sign up and they, like every week, they're, you guys are their students and they'll take on like 10 people and they'll be like, okay, so this week we're going to learn about anatomy. All we're going to draw is anatomy. This is your homework. It's almost like going to art school without having to pay that crazy <laughs> yeah. amount. So I would suggest that. If, what was that's the, the one that I, I think it's Udemy. There is yeah. uh, Udemy. There's a couple like course course courses. Oh, and stuff the like U D E M Y. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's U D E M Y or E M E Y. M Y. Yeah, yeah. They do a lot of different courses. Yeah, it's not just art courses, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've had people reach. I mean, I've had people reach out to be like, could we work? You know, but I think for like a lot of artists, like, they don't. I don't, yeah, it's like same as you. I don't know any, any artists that have apprentices. You know, they have assistants maybe, but mm -hmm. even then, you'd be more about learning about the process behind it as opposed to like your drawing skills maybe. But um, I would I would say also like don't even if you are questioning the quality, it might not it might be like just in your head. You know, exactly. What I mean? like, yeah. And and I would share it regardless because it, when you share it, a you have like a cool timeline to see your progress and your growth, and you have people's feedback. You know, and you might find that. A lot of people like love your art as it is, you know, and like want to be and are super interested in it for what it is. And then you can kind of look back and see like, oh wow, look where I was a year ago, and where I've come from now. And like, you know, I've had that where people, I when I first started like selling art, I look back and I'm super cringing about a lot of the pieces that I sold <laughs> back then. I'm like, oh, what was I thinking? But at the time, you know, someone liked it, and it's cool to see how it progresses and stuff. So I would try to be easier on yourself in some ways in that sense. Yeah. It's exactly what she said. That's what I wanted to say. Like, just uh, you know, put your work out there, even if you don't necessarily fully believe in it now. It will push you mm -hmm. to just keep striving to get better, to practice, and you know, it, it's going to get you to the next step. It was like the hardest thing for me to do was to just share my work at all, yeah. and it just mm -hmm. kept me going. So and, yeah. I would do Instagram for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think Instagram and Facebook are really strong platforms. Like, yeah. I mean, Facebook. Twitter is growing too. Yes, so too. Yeah, totally. Start yeah. putting your stuff on there because yeah. a lot of artists are really making that like a, a little art okay. community now. So yeah. get one now. Yeah. 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 And you're gonna go that route. Like learn, learn the hashtags. Learn like, <laughs> post every day. Like yeah. use story. Use you know um, what's the other one? The highlights. Oh yeah, the Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All the tools um, of social. If you have media. other artist friends, it really helps if you guys like share each other 
tag each other, maybe even get together and show how you guys work together because people really want to follow like the creative journey. And I think that's, that's really super true, interesting. Yeah. Like most of the pages I follow, I'm like, what are you guys doing now? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, I mean, yeah. and one thing I was going to say too is like, even when you are at like a professional level where you're drawing yeah. all the time, you're never like, at least for me, I'm never like 100% satisfied with my work or think like now it's perfect you know I'm always like oh like I feel like and when I see other people's work I'm like oh, I want so much to like learn how to do more like build upon it and even comparing my work today from like today last year like I see so many things from that from last year that I'm like happy are, are better but I, I'm sure I'll feel the same in another year you know so I think that never ex really goes away, but you just kind of learn to like be content and like excited by your growth and like that kind of thing, your progress for sure. I want to add to that, if I may, please. Yeah. Um, um, I say uh, to answer the, the part where does any one of you take uh, apprentices or interns or whatever. I think that uh, anybody who's interested in that should look for artists that you want to work with or learn from, mm -hmm. and then reach out to them directly. You may never know. They may have interns. They may have opportunities for that. Or if you never thought about it, that may right. be an idea. We're like, Wait a minute. Back on so, so you can yeah. come and work with me for one day, one day a week or whatever, oh, yeah, and do absolutely. some things for me and so on. And that could actually also spark that conversation and yes. open up an opportunity. That you or like a collaboration kind of thing, right, you know, exactly, like yeah. collaborating with an artist and then learning like how to draw together, like right. you know, look, building your style right. and stuff. But, yeah. but be open to reaching out to artists and find the ones that you like. That whose art style you like, whose themes you like, because I'm a professional artist and I have interns and apprentices all the time, mm -hmm. and we yeah. rotate throughout the year, That's awesome. just yeah. so that we can, so that what what I the value that I get from having somebody else with me, uh, they get in return a, a little extra on their talent and business. Totally. Yeah. And what they're saying about putting it out, I do podcasting. I've been doing it forever, and what we always say to people, oh, my first episode is my worst. Mm -hmm. This episode you do right now is the worst. You just keep putting it out and move forward. Yeah. What did she say? A year ago, people were buying it. And she looks back and go, I sold that. But somebody loved it and they bought it. Yeah. So you, what I picked up on what you said was, I'm not happy with where it is. doesn't matter. Put it up. Let somebody else tell you, man, that's gorgeous. Or maybe you'll get somebody like them who sees the tag. Oh, man, this is great. If I see this and that and here's a tip, you never know. And then use yeah. the social media because those who go, this is trash. You block them. You <laughs> take the constructive route, right? You do exactly. want feedback. You still want, if somebody tears you down, that belt you out. That, yeah. no. so that's why constructive Instagram feedback social. is key. Exactly. Yeah, what yeah. I've learned on Instagram is if you hate it, they'll love it. If you love it, they'll hate yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I'll know. draw a sketch and I'll be like, ah, this is crap, whatever. Yeah. That will get the 6,000 likes. The drawing that I worked on, I was like, oh, for days and days, they're like, yeah, we don't Whatever. care. Yeah, <laughs> moving on. So put it out. Somebody will like it. That's yeah. very true. Uh, there, I know in, in Mashup Music, there's a site where you can put your mix up and have other DJs give you feedback. Is there oh, something like that maybe cool. with Art World? or? Um, in, on DeviantArt, uh, DeviantArt, a lot of the time, if you click that you want construct, there's a, a section on the side that tells you, do you want constructive criticism or not? If you click that, usually you'll get some trolls, but a lot of people who genuinely <laughs> want to help you will comment and be like, oh, okay, um, the the arm is a little off, this is what you need to fix. Or you can also, like you were saying with apprenticing, um, get people to redline for you. Like, hey, would you mind redlining my art? So it's when an uh, artist takes uh, another layer, they put it on top, and they draw what's wrong and how you can fix oh, it on top. So wow, you can ask for that. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Question. Uh, I do. I have, I have two kids. Um, I am lucky enough that my husband helps, you know, a lot. I also have my mom and a mother-in-law that are like super obsessed with the grandbabies. <laughs> so, um, they actually take the kids for a few days a week, which allows me and my husband to like focus on our own careers and like really focus because when the kids are around, like everything gets a little bit convoluted. But um, and I'm not complaining, I love my kids, but <laughs> but it is really, really nice to just focus, you know, like those days I'm like up until like three, four in the morning just painting because I know that, you know, as soon as they come back, I'm back on mom mode. Um, so I, I guess that's like a, a not common answer because I have so much help, I'm fortunate enough that it's just there. I. I know a lot of moms like struggle with like how to like balance you know balance everything and like I I'm 
lucky enough that I don't have that struggle. So. Would you yeah. say, even in your uh, hectic schedule, if you make time, that's more time than you have right now. If you took five minutes just to work on your art, that's still more than doing nothing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I have four kids. It, it can get tough. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've built a career doing the podcasting thing, and it's been some fights and some struggles. But if you make time and find balance, I think that's what you're talking about. Is finding that balance. Well, do, there's there. definitely that balance. I kind of really enjoy the fact that for like two days out of my week, I get to just focus on artwork, and it's almost like I'm not. I don't exist. I'm just painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and which like I, I will still talk to my kids. I'm not like. You know, abandoned for, 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 for those two days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man, I sound like an awful mother. No, 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 no. You have to make that time for yourself, yeah. otherwise it's like... Yeah, no, I don't know how I would like I keep my sanity. Otherwise, like, I used to... I never planned on being a mother, by the way. I just, like, tapped into it twice. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's... Uh, it, I'm in a good spot right now to, like, keep the career going and... The whole thing. Are you a mother yourself? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I have two. Okay. Uh, four and 18 months. So. Yeah. And, and are you an artist and yeah. trying to get it going? I have a school foundation and I also yeah. uh, draw. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh, Do you have outside help? or? Not really. Okay. Um, <laughs> my mother in law lives in Seattle and my mom lives in Athens, but she's okay. also kind of older and sickly, yeah. so I have a part time. I'm at home with the kids also. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I don't have kids, but I babysit a lot on the side. I have a lot of family that's like, oh, they just drop them off. That's the babysitter I want, right? Yeah. 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 But, uh, right something that really helps is kids want to do whatever you're doing. So if I that's have true. a deadline yeah. and I'm like, oh, crap, these four-year-olds are running around, what I do is I'll sit them down with crayons next to me and I'll be like try to draw what I'm drawing and whoever can draw what I'm drawing the best is going to get an extra lollipop or something like that so I think That's just idea, um, yeah. drawing around them makes them want to do it too and that'll give you time because That's, not the yeah, baby baby like but the activity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not her, yeah. That's super super yeah. sweet. Like if you want to uproot your life and be like kind of like a leech or a jerk like I was I literally just like moved right between both mother-in-law and my mom like 30 minutes away from each other and like, <laughs> yes. and like, like have at it like here's your grandchildren <laughs> but, yeah. yeah i don't know if that's doable for you but yeah. it worked out for me everybody has such a different situation yeah. Yeah. And, and i know this is human nature you get in your mind it has to be this way i have to have to be able to sit down and in silence if you get rid of the have to mm -hmm. and find time to just do something then you get something done, right? No, absolutely. Yeah. Like, you know, three days out of the week, they're, they're in school. Like, I'm still a mom. I mm -hmm. take them to daycare or school or whatever. And I figure out how to make just a few hours or a few moments out of the day work. Like, yeah. it's, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You have a question? Yeah, so, um, you know, I think there are a lot of great freedoms that come with a freelance lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, but one thing that I still find difficult and always wonder about with freelance artists is the schedule. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously, like, you know, when you're at like your guys' level is really crazy. But do you guys have you guys like uh, stuck to like a really strict schedule as far as like I'm gonna do commission stuff these hours, I'm gonna do personal stuff these hours, or do you guys just kind of like pretty much go along with whatever is happening at the moment and just fit in? Um, I wish I was like that. <laughs> I wish I was a it's three o'clock time to stop kind of person, and I want to become that way because I'm the type of person where I'll just keep on working from the second I wake up until three o'clock in the morning I'm looking around and like oh I've been sitting here at this computer for like literally 24 <laughs> hours so um yeah I want to be that <laughs> um I usually what I do is is work by deadlines I know this has to be done by Monday so I'm working like a psychopath until it's yeah. It's Monday. Yeah. I wish I was better at it, but I'm not. <laughs> no, so totally. I think know. it's hard. I mean, it's hard when you are your own boss, you know, you and you, and especially like I'm not good at like delegating or I don't have an assistant. You know, I mean, I I'd like to do that, but it's just I'm very I'm kind of like controlling with my art. Like I like being in charge of all of it, you know, and so it's hard for me to like ask for help or try to get someone to assist me in any way. Um, and so. For me, like yeah, like I, I just 
like we were saying earlier, I sort of just put everything else aside and I end up just overworking probably too much, you know what I mean? Yeah. But but I, it's also hard because when you are freelance, you're home and I'm sure I get distracted in ways I don't realize, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, I've been on like scrolling through Instagram for like an hour and a half, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's work, you know, but it's not. So it's like, <laughs> but, it uh, but it is, but it is, but it is, but it's not. So it's like yeah. the fact that I work from like 8 a.m. till 3 in the morning most yeah. days is not, it's like, it's it's a mixture of work and just random stuff. So it's, but it's hard to be organized about it. I think there are probably some people that are really good at like setting their time. You know, I remember like I think Nick Cave or something talked about how he has like a whole separate studio that he just goes to and he treats it just like a job and he goes there like locks every day, the door. locks yeah, the door, yeah, he has yeah. like no phone or anything. I think yeah. and he just mm. like works and then he goes home and he's home. You know, and I'm not good at that. Like I'm very like I mix everything all the time like if I'm eating dinner watching a movie or hanging out with my family like I'm still working you know yeah. and yeah. they're pretty accepting of that in general like even my friends and stuff like they know mm -hmm. I always work um, but but it's not I don't know if it's healthy like I don't know if it's the greatest thing to do not good advice <laughs> yeah yeah it's okay. are you happy <laughs> I, but yeah. I, I'm really happy. That's the thing. And that's like, the thing. my sister is the same. I mean, she's not an art. She's like an epidemiologist, but she works constantly. And when we were just in like Hawaii together for like a family reunion, and we were both just like working on the beach, like <laughs> drawing the entire time, and she was just like editing papers and stuff. So yeah, that's the thing. But you get your stuff done. Like that's yeah. the whole thing. Like as so, so long as you meet the deadline and you're happy, that's what matters. I I am just like you guys uh, I'm chaos like I <laughs> there's no way like and if you tell me that like I need to like do this from x hour to x hour like I'm gonna be like no yeah. I'm gonna do it from y hour to y hour because you said so that's, that's kind of my personality um yeah and I'm your kind of a masochist you, right? like <laughs> though I know she hates me she's like she's actually my sister as well which is the only reason she's she's the worst. Yeah. Me. like she would have left me so long ago but like she's my sister so yeah. she's like, she has to, yeah like I've had managers before where they're like no <laughs> like I'm not dealing with this um but yeah uh so I, I think it depends on your personality if you find that you want a structured life and you like structure that's what you should definitely go to put those in, you know and see if it fits if it doesn't you know because life will throw stuff at you and mm -hmm. it's just like even if you have a schedule like you might not be able to follow it so, and I would yeah. I would the only thing I would add to all of our things is that I the one thing I've learned is that I don't I try my best to separate like my, my like sleeping from working like I used to work in bed and stuff and I would just it would just confuse my brain you know what I mean because I would never really shut mm -hmm. off you know and that's a hard thing it's really hard to shut off and like because I, I know it is important to like sometimes take a break otherwise you don't want to burn out and like it is possible and that's a hard thing and so I try not to work in places like I try to keep different associations for like here's where I relax like here's where I do this and I'm not always good at it but it does help have a designated like Area. work workplace where yes. like I know that's the mode I'm in and that's fine and I can just be there and not have to feel guilty about working yeah. somewhere you know <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. and with that we are going to be out of time okay. so real quick big round of applause <laughs> for thank you if you would, uh, it's up to you, of course, you get to make your own personal decisions, but from the con standpoint, if you would, let them get back to their booths. They'll probably be happy to talk to you all day long. Yeah, the booths. we didn't get to your well, question. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, come, yeah. On, come yeah. over and yeah. we'll answer thank whatever. You. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>